Good morning. Uh, my name is David Plazas. I'm the Opinion and Engagement Director for the USA Today Network Tennessee and the Tennessean. Today, I have the pleasure of having Howard Jones, candidate for Senate District 19 for the state of Tennessee's General Assembly, to talk about his campaign uh, for the upcoming election on August 2nd. There are six candidates running for office, four Democrats in the August 2nd primary, and two independents who will face whoever wins the Democratic primary. There are no Republicans in this race. Uh, District 19 includes North Nashville, downtown Nashville, and parts of Southeast Nashville as well. Uh, and uh, Mr. Jones, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, David. Thank you for the invite. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to run for this position, or why you're running for this position. Okay, thank you so very much again. Um, I am a uh, native Nashvillian. I've been in Nashville all of my life. Um, I have, in this 30 years, last 30 years of my life, been preparing to serve, been preparing for uh, the service of leadership in this, in this service leadership in this state. Um, I've been a probation officer at juvenile court for 10 years. Uh, in that, I realized that just locking our children up is not going to uh, solve our issues. So I began to um, teach, and uh, I've been teaching and I've been an educator and a principal for over, over 20 years. So I've been being really working and serving in this community. Um, we've established uh, affordable housing uh, when it didn't make sense, when we saw that there was going to be a need, of course, and we just established it. We still have affordable housing, and uh, the rent is $500, 550 a month for two-bedroom units. We can do more of that. Mm -hmm. I, I just believe with leadership we can do more of creating efficient and affordable housing. Um, we, we just have to have common sense, a common sense approach to education, a common sense approach to economic development, a common sense approach to uh, efficient and affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've been a part of doing that for 30 years. I am prepared to indeed go to the legislature, go to the state senate. And I believe uh, surely the wonderful, honorable Senator Harper, who's sitting in that seat, she saw that. She endorsed me. I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm running because I, I owe the likes of the leadership that was rendered by Avon Williams, who was the first African-American male to sit in this seat in the 19th Senatorial District. Um, I'm just prepared to indeed serve, and I just believe that that common sense approach to education, where our kids can come out of high school, they can come out of school, and they could be career ready and college ready. Every school ought to be uh, like a Hume Fogg, like an MLK. I enjoyed teaching at MLK. It was fantastic. But I think we can indeed have a, have a greater common sense approach to education. Everybody I just discovered, not just discovered, but I discovered that all kids don't want to go to college. And some that are coming out of high school, we really could, with the, with the proper education of our kids, uh, of our children, of our youth, um, in this it city, we can indeed uh, curtail some of the criminal activity that's taking place in our community. Now, if you're elected and you start uh, next year for your first session, how will you approach dealing with your colleagues and also getting your agenda across? You know, I, I thank you for asking that question. I, I've already begun, and, and I've met them all for the last. I started this election uh, February of last year, and I made it a point to meet uh, those that uh, are across the aisle and, and start building that relationship. Mm -hmm. I just believe building a proper relationship with people makes the difference and not just getting into some kind of confrontation because I've, read, I've met others that are running for this office and say, well, you know, they're ready to indeed do, but they have not done. And by sitting in the seat and not producing leadership and legislation, I think I'm ready for uh, building that relationship, setting up legislation that's going to be rigorous and having that, that wonderful, courageous conversation with those across the aisle that we can come together and do those things that we must do for this state. Uh, everybody needs food, clothing, shelter. Everybody needs to have security, and we need to belong. And we belong to each other. Mm -hmm. So having that conversation with them and uh, my experience building relationships with, uh, with, with my colleagues, building relationships with a diverse staff. Uh, we had 3,000 students at, at uh, McGavick High School. And every school that I've gone to, we build that type of relationship that we can make a difference. Um, and I, it doesn't matter where they come from. You know, I've, I've had conversations with pe people all, all of all walks, 
uh, whether they, they're Muslim, Jewish, Christian, coming together mm-hmm. under the banner of humanity, coming together under the banner of just doing what's right. It's just common sense stuff that we need to do. But without the vision, uh, we perish. And what's happening in some of our neighborhoods, David, is uh, they're perishing because we've not had the leadership to come in and engage them and absolutely say, hey, it's about we the people. It's a we the people movement. We can do it. We're going to do it. And we must do it. So let's probe a little bit into education because you passionately talk about it. You are an educator. And we discussed that extensively in the editorial board meeting right before this. Uh, And, you know, education should be non-controversial. I think people agree that children deserve a quality education, Mm -hmm. but the reality is we have a lot of conflict right now in Tennessee. We've got uh, cities, including Nashville, that have sued the state for adequate funding. We have the consternation over the testing system and also over how teachers are assessed uh, themselves uh, for their pay and their retention in in the school system. And as you've talked about uh, issues of affordable housing, it's harder and harder for a teacher to afford to live in a major city like Nashville. Mm -hmm. Let's probe a little bit into, you know, how can you be the conciliator or the convener of conversations to get people on the same boat on education? And what would would those issues be? Okay. You know, I've I've discovered that many, David, are trying to coach from the couch. I've been in the trench, and I'm prepared to have a conversation, courageous conversations, and common sense conversations about education. Um, Bringing people to the table. And being real honest about, you know, where we are with the debacle of the testing, all right, and the millions of dollars that we've wasted in, in, that, in that area, that we need to begin to actually look at, hey, we, you know, why keep doing something and expecting different results? That's insanity. So uh, our teachers need to be indeed compensated, compensated and taken care of, but we at the same time mm-hmm. must hold every tax dollar acc- accountable, you know, it should be held accountable. We can't just throw money at an issue and say it's going to solve it without a strategy, without you know, a good strategic plan. But bring the people to the table that, that know education, best practice pieces. Let's, let's really analyze it, look at it, and begin to look at the data, the facts concerning it, and say, hey, these things are the things we need to do. It's not fair to uh, assess a teacher 15% of their uh, evaluation on a test that's not valid. And then for us as citizens to have to pay for it, we could do better than that. This state in its past, we've done better in terms of our assessments. We need to come together and set the curriculum, come together with our teachers, come together with with educators, and set the curriculum for this state. Legislators got to take the lead in setting that standard of education and then begin to make sure that those persons that are supposed to absolutely monitor that make that happen. Each, the Metro National Public Schools and every particular school system across the state, it is the state's responsibility, according to the uh, our Constitution of the United States, to educate our kids. It is our state, and it, it, that's, that's where the bullseye is, right there with the state of Tennessee. And as a legislator, as, as a state senator, I will indeed take that, take that leadership. I would lead to make sure that we begin to indeed make sure that our kids are taught and that they will be career ready, that they will be college ready, that we will indeed begin to supply it. We, 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 we have a lottery in this, in this state. All right? Funding could be done, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we hold, whether it's charter school, public school, hold them accountable and set that standard high mm-hmm. because we have wonderful educators in this state. I mean, I know some great teachers that they've given their lives to making sure that our kids are taught that this state has a future. So uh, giving them, pulling them in, and making sure that we're together with this, with some common sense, practice, common sense practices, and not just throwing things at them because you think that's best, this is new, what's going on in, in Texas, or this is going on great for at another state. This is Tennessee. And we need to do what's best for Tennesseans. And that's why I'm running for state senate. Now, you'd mentioned charter schools, which has become a hot-button issue and has been a hot-button issue in past statewide and local races. Yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about your philosophy regarding charter schools and also the issue of vouchers? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and and it's uh, with the charter school movement that's out there, I think some of the things, one of the negative things I've seen with charter schools, sir, is um, – 
students are rejected from that charter school and sent back to their zone school in January. They start off in August and they come back in January. I was talking to somebody with the Tennessee Department, Tennessee Board of Education, and and I said, look, if you went into a grocery store and you purchased a bag of chips and you opened up that bag and you discovered there was no chips in that bag, just a bunch of air, wouldn't you want your money back? Yeah. So that's what happens when, when our children oftentimes go to some charter schools and they're sent back to their, because they're put out of that school and sent back to their zone school and we assess them, and they don't have the information in their head that they should have, that charter school should send the money back. Hmm. We've got to do that. In terms of the voucher system, if we look at what's going on, guys, if, if we keep, uh, um, you know, you, you, you put a lot of uh, pans, you put a lot of pots on a, on, a, on a stove, if you're not careful, nothing will get hot. Mm-hmm. All right. But if a charter school is doing well, and making a difference with our kids, whether they are economically disadvantaged or whether they are exceptionally uh, educated kids uh, or ELL students, we need to look at what they're doing Mm -hmm. and learn from that. If they're not doing well, then we need to cut the funds off. Um, If we, you know, as a a state decide we're going to send money and give vouchers and and parents start taking their children to uh, private schools, we need to hold that private school accountable for um, what they what they do, but we need to be very careful. That could be a very slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Now, the legislature decided not to really take that on this past year, but it could the following year yes. in terms of the vouchers. Yes. Well, let me ask you a little bit about uh, differentiating yourself against your main primary opponent, uh, Representative Gilmore, uh, yes. who has a lot of elective experience. Uh, mm-hmm. You are coming in as an outsider as it comes to being a, a, a public official. Absolutely. Uh, why does it matter, and does that give you an advantage or disadvantage? It gives me an advantage. I'm a leader. I, I've led. In fact, I'm most qualified, more qualified than anybody else running in this in this campaign. And I was sitting in my quiet time, and I, I chuckled because sitting in the seat in the legislature does not make you a leader, just as sitting in a garage does not make you a car. You know, I- if you look at what I've done and look at how we've led and how we are ready to start today, leadership is not just starting once you get elected. Leadership is what takes place before you get there. And what we've done and how we're prepared, we're prepared to lead and be a statesman and not somebody that's just sitting in a seat. I'm not running for a seat. I'm running for our children's lives. That's that's the difference between me and my opponent, that I am, I'm, hold up the difference between accomplishments, of leadership accomplishments, versus the person who has been a, a, a uh, professional politician, a career politician. That's what they've been. I bring you leadership. What you see is what you get. So talk a little bit about uh, leadership. And so we discussed this a little bit in the editorial, but for yes. the public, talk about what you're most proud of in terms of your leadership history. Um, most proud of, and I start looking at that, and I, and I, I really thank, my, thank, thank the higher power for allowing me just to serve. Um, when I think about... Uh, the 10 years being a probation officer and the lives that we touched um, and, and start saying I could do better. Um, when I think about uh, being a teacher and running into uh, Brother David at his uh, restaurant Sunday and he comes to me and says, Mr. Jones, you taught me and thank you for what you've done for me. When I think about the, uh, the young man that called into the radio station uh, on Sunday as I was having a debate with uh, my opponent and said that Mr. Jones, he has indeed effectively helped me. Um, that's leadership in terms of education. When I think about transforming uh, McGavick High School and, 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 and Cameron Middle School and, and uh, my gosh, it, what we've done in education, mm-hmm. even in leading at, at, uh, in Antioch at the John F. Kennedy Middle School, um, what we've done in terms of preparing our children to take lead and make a difference, I'm telling you, it is, it is through that leadership in terms of education that I'm proud of. Not only that, I'm proud of seeing a situation and when looking and listening to leaders, so-called leaders that are politicians, talk about the, you know, the North Nashville area. Instead of doing something about it, they just talk about it. Well, we decided to establish Kingdom Cafe and Grill. 
in an area where 70% of African Americans have gone to the penitentiary. He decided to, you know, purchase a restaurant right there and use those previously convicted persons. And spinoffs from that have been businesses, you know. So that's leadership. Uh, when looking at efficient, affordable housing, instead of just talking about it and just waving your hand about it or trying to just get on a bandwagon with it, we stepped out and established affordable housing. We have uh, indeed slated some additional housing that's going to go up right on Jefferson Street. Affordable. That's leadership. That's the difference between one sitting in a seat and not being so truthful about their leadership. Check. I tell you what, I've done more probably in the last five years than that person has done in ten in making the difference in the lives of people in the city, in the state. I just want to do more. I think we can. I believe we can. And we're ready to lead on day one. In fact, we were ready to lead four years ago. You know, one of the challenges you may encounter is the fact that uh, this past year there were five Democrats out of a 33-member uh, legislative yes. body, the Senate. Uh, how do you deal with that? You know, you're going to be in yes. a super minority unless something radically changes. Yes. Uh, but right now the predictions are that that may not happen. That's likely not to right. happen. Right. How do you be effective as uh, someone in a minority? Yeah. It, it, here's, here's the piece, David, and I appreciate that question. Um, I think those are excuses. You know, when people say, well, you know, you, you are in the minority. Um, I've seen Senator Harper steal uh, pass legislation. I've seen her steal operate, even in this situation. I saw her work when, when the Democrats were in the majority, and I see her and I've seen her and watch, watched her uh, surely continue to, to serve in this capacity. Um, I, we've got to build a relationship with people, and I've begun to do that already. I started meeting with them, sitting down with them, and, and understanding those per persons that have been uh, elected to represent great citizens of the state of Tennessee. And we are all Tennesseans, mm -hmm. some Republican, some Democrat. But we have been, you know, wonderful state to live in. And we've got to continue to do that by working together. And uh, I think I'm the man to do that. I, I can build relationships, have done that with diverse people, and have been prepared to do that. You know, in the school system, uh, you have teachers from all walks of life. You have teachers that are Republicans. You have teachers that are Democrats. You have teachers that are independents. You have students that are of that persuasion. I, I had some students and built a relationship with them that that were supposedly skinheads, and, and their, their book they carried around was Mein Kampf. And I said, hey, my job with you is to make sure you get out of here. Know how to read, write, and do some arithmetic. And I built that relationship. They carried a Confederate flag, but my job is to make sure that we come together. And those students today still have a relationship with them. Not because they were, they, they, they were uh, uh, different, but we had so much more in common than we had in terms of our differences. So I would say that um, I'm the one to build that bridge between those that are Republicans mm -hmm. and those that are Democrats. I think I have what it takes to do that. That's why I'm running for state mm -hmm. senate. There are a couple of comments and, uh, uh, here on the Facebook uh, post. You know, some are saying uh, success and blessings, Pastor, from Paulette Woodward, for example. We have, um, mm, thank uh, you. we need a visible leader. Uh, and then you have a question about uh, filing your financial report. Have you done that yet? And, and Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about that. I, I don't, I don't uh, we, we, we have, in terms of our financial report, it has been um, those persons that uh, we've not had a great, you know, those particular organizations uh, giving us money. The money that we have gotten uh, from regular people. All, just uh, just today I was looking at what was coming in, you know, $5, $10, $50, $25. Those funds that were indeed from the masses of the people. This is a groundswell and a movement. And I encourage per people that are listening to indeed just follow the movement. Follow the movement. We we uh, are not uh, s uh, situated by uh, interest groups. We have not been a career politician. Uh, probably have not done this thing in the way that uh, traditional politicians have done it. We've done it from the hearts of the people, and that's why uh, we're running for state senate. I believe it's time, and I think people are ready for a change. Well, Howard Jones, any final word before we conclude? Yes, my name is Howard Jones. I'm running for state senate of the 19th Senatorial District. It is indeed time for a change, 
and it's time for a change where we must get out and vote. We have five more days before early voting ends. So I'm encouraging, get your family out to vote. A vote for Howard Jones is a vote for a common sense education. A vote for Howard Jones is a vote for a common sense economic development and empowerment. A vote for Howard Jones is a vote for efficient and affordable housing. We can do this thing. We will, we can and we will win together. David, thank you so very much for all that you do. Thank you very much. And to our viewing audience, remember the election is August 2nd. And as uh, Mr. Jones had referenced, the 28th is the final day for early voting. Uh, please go out and do your civic duty and vote. And thank you so much for joining us here on the Tennesseans Facebook Live broadcast.